everybody, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my entire Guerlain collection as well as rating the top 10 Guerlain perfumes from my collection, of course, at the end. We're going to start with Chalamar because it's the perfume that I have the most of in my collection. I'm not usually a flanker person. If I like the original perfume, I don't go searching for flankers of it unless I really, really like the perfume. And I don't know how I've amassed this many Shalimars because to tell you the truth, it's not my favorite Guerlain. So I'm not sure how this happened. And I wasn't aware until I got all the perfumes ready for this video, really how many Shalimars I have in my collection. We're gonna start with Shalimar EDP. This is a classic fragrance. It's right up there with Chanel number no. five as far as iconic fragrances go. People recognize this fragrance. They know this fragrance. They know the bottle, they know the name, and a lot of people also know the smell. A lot of people's mothers, grandmothers wore this fragrance. It's that type of fragrance. It's almost 100 years old and it's still one of Guerlain's best-selling fragrances. I believe it's number two as far as their best-selling fragrances go. My first experience with this fragrance was my grandmother, of course, like many other people. I was in ninth grade and I went to live with my grandma. I got expelled from school. It's a long story. <laughs> Uh, I've changed a lot since then, but I went to live with grandma. Grandma had this on her vanity. This was her signature scent, and I might have smelled it on her through the years before that, but never really recognized this bottle or saw the bottle. Of course, when I saw it on her vanity, of course I sniffed it. I opened it up and sniffed it, and I, I was kind of indifferent, to tell you the truth. I wasn't didn't love it, didn't hate it at the time. I've obviously learned to love Chalamar over the years. It's one of those timeless, enveloping fragrances. I will show you the other flankers or other iterations of Chalamar that I have. I do have this quirky little bottle. This is the Eau de Cologne. I, I like these bottles, I don't know. They're kind of quirky. This is the only one in my collection, my Guerlain collection, that I have like this. They do have other fragrances that did come in this little bottle. I like it. I also have this little Eau de Toilette in this type of bottle. This is a very small, I think this is a 15 ml bottle. Yes, it's a 15 ml bottle. I also have the Chalamar Parfum. Initial, Initial, and this bottle is just stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Um, this is one of my favorite bottles. I also have the Souffle de Parfum. This is a beautiful flanker. I probably like the bottle more than I like the perfume inside. I believe these come in a different designed bottle every year, and this is the Peacock year. I'm not sure what year it is might be 2018, 17, not sure. But these are some of the most beautiful bottles. If you ask me what my favorite version of Chalamar is, I would say it is the Parfum. I don't reach for this whole lot because I do have other perfumes that I prefer more. But if I was going to wear a Chalamar, it would probably be this one. I feel like the others, some of the others lack the depth and the leathery dry down that I like so much on this one. Let's move on to Lair Blue. I have both the EDT and the EDP. I would love to have the x -trait. I don't have Shellmer x -trait. I don't feel like it's necessary um, because I don't love the fragrance as much as I love Lair Blue, but I am lusting over having the x -trait in my collection. It is pretty expensive and I wanna find someone really reputable to buy it from, so I have not done so yet, but it's coming. It's in my future. Lear Blue is another Jacques Guerlain uh, creation, as was Chalamar. This is an exquisite fragrance. This one speaks to me in ways that no other Guerlain fragrance speaks to me. This one really touches me in a more personal way. People describe this as a sad fragrance, a melancholy-inducing fragrance. I think it's probably due to the fact that it's a cold fragrance, it's got iris and violet, things that I love, but I find my experience with it to be the exact opposite. I find that this is very calming, comforting, 
and relaxing for me when I'm a little bit anxious or I just want to sleep really well. This is something that I reach for. I do like the EDP, but as you can see, I don't really wear it that often. I prefer the EDT. I just feel like this has more of the nuances that I like about Lear Blue and it has less of the nuances that I don't like about Lear Blue, if that makes any sense. I feel like sometimes um, people describe this as being a little bit medicinal and I do have to agree with that because I feel like the EDP is a little bit more medicinal. I feel maybe it might have more carnation, um, maybe more aniseed, whereas this is a little bit smoother to me. So I do prefer the EDT version. Moving on to my unicorn fragrance. This is Meteorites from the year 2000. This was my unicorn fragrance before I found it. I always loved the smell of Guerlain Meteorites powder, the Guerlain Meteorites pearls, the cosmetics, and I always thought to myself, I wish they had a fragrance, a perfume that smelled just like this. And little did I know, they already had one. Of course, it had been discontinued, long discontinued. And I was buying samples, trying to find something that smelled really close to this. And I finally <laughs> uh, realized that this existed and you could actually buy it. People did actually still have it. Um, it was at a higher price point than I wanted to pay. But finally I found it on a Facebook group and it is now in my collection. As you can see, I conserve this fragrance. I shouldn't Life is too short, I should wear this and enjoy it, but I just want to hold on to it. I love this fragrance so much. It is one of my favorite violet fragrances. If, if you love violet fragrances, powdery violet fragrances, I really uh, suggest you try this and watch my violet fragrance video. I have a video where I talk about my favorite violets. Vi violence, not violence, violet fragrances. I will link it up here or down below. I was very, very excited when I found out that in 2018 they would be launching a new version of Meteorites until I smelled it. And this is the new version. This is the one that came out in 2018. This to me is nothing like this. This is more of a fruity floral fragrance and I just don't like it. This was a complete fail to me as far as what they did and how they changed this fragrance. I did buy two. I blind bought them of course and uh, which is why I still have one. I will get rid of this at some point. I just, just, I just, mm -mm, mm -mm. I have one more version of meteorites and this is the home fragrance and the only reason I have this is because I could not find this and this was not released yet and so I got this and sprayed it on my clothes and everything else, my sheets and maybe my hair, maybe my skin um, to get that meteorite scent. So I have this one also. Next up is Mont Prisou Nectar. I know that my French pronunciation is horrible. You can leave me a comment down below if you want but I'm already well aware of it. Um, this is a fragrance that was a love at first sniff. I ordered something from the Guerlain Boutique. They put this as a sample and as soon as I sniffed it, I was on the phone with the sales associate ordering this. Oh, what's that? Hmm. No perfumes coming out. I wonder why. We'll get to that in a second. But this is an absolutely gorgeous fragrance. It's orange blossom. To me, I get honeysuckle. There's jasmine, there's almond. This just smells like bees going from flower to flower, pollinating, sunny days, warmth, an orange tree in your backyard that is full of orange blossoms on a warm day. That's what I get when I smell this fragrance. The bottle design, however, is horrific. I hate these poofers. Usually um, there's a stopper that I have that goes like this, um, but to actually spray it, this is the contraption that you would use. Surely a brand like Guerlain can be more innovative with their bottles. I don't like this because when you spray it, just a little poof comes out 
and I've had to sit here and spray um, about 25 times just to get that to come out. So I don't like these, um, which is why they give you this with your purchase because they know what a horrible design this is. Do better, Guerlain. You can do better. And I don't know why, but there's quite a bit of sediment in here, and I think it might be coming from the inside of this puffer. When I get downstairs, I'm going to take this off and replace it with the little stopper so that it doesn't evaporate even more and get more sediment in it. Here we have a Mon Guerlain, and when this was first launched, this is a fragrance that I sniffed and dismissed. I went to the store sniffed it and just dismissed it. I thought, mm, don't need that in my collection. I was so, so wrong. I think the reason I dismissed it was because it does have a lot of lavender in it, um, which I have learned to appreciate over the years. This is a very vanilla forward fragrance with a lot of lavender in it, but I love this fragrance so much. This is the EDP version. I am not really interested in the other flankers. I've smelled the new flankers that have come out. Don't really love them. I like this one a lot better. Like I said, I'm not a flanker person, so I tend to be loyal to the original. And this one is perfect. It's not the boring fragrance that I thought it was when I first sniffed it. I think this is classy, it's elegant. It's something that you can wear day to day. It's perfect for any occasion. I just find this to be a very versatile fragrance and one that again I like to wear this to bed because it's something that's very comforting and makes me feel good. Okay I'm gonna go a little bit faster because I feel like this video is gonna be a hundred years long if I don't. This is Gourmand Coquine. This is one of my favorite gourmand scents ever of life. This reminds me of a cherry cordial biting into one of those cherry cordial candies with the syrupy boozy center and then it has a chocolate outside. This is one of my most complimented fragrances. Whenever I wear this, people compliment me and I can do without the rest of the Elixir Chanel line, but this one is exceptional. If you haven't tried this and you like gourmands, you definitely need to get a sample now it's good the next fragrance is Eritage, and this is my favorite marketed towards men scent that guerlain makes obviously i don't subscribe to that because i bought it to wear myself it's aromatic a little bit spicy it's woody it's to me what classically masculine smells like it was made in the early 90s but i don't feel like this is dated i don't feel like this is mature at all. I just really really like this scent a lot. I have two of these types of bottles. One with a puffer, one with not. We'll talk about the puffer first. This is Bois d'Amani and it has this interesting bottle that closes so you can't... oh I guess you can't. Okay this way you can't spray, this way you can. Mm. This is a discontinued fragrance but it is a beautiful balsamic, it's smoky. One of my favorite perfumers, Anique Minardo, made this, and um, this is a gorgeous fragrance. I don't reach for it too much. I reach for it on very cold days. That's when I like to wear it. It's, to me, it smells like a very comforting, enveloping cashmere blanket next to a fire. I really, really like this one. And the other one I have in this bottle is Spiritus Dobleveni. This is a fragrance that I dismissed again for quite a while. I did not like this vanilla scent. It's a boozy vanilla scent, but oh my gosh, the more I wear it, the more I love it. And I did not include this in my favorite vanilla scent video that I did, but if I had done it now, I definitely would. I only bought this because Guerlain was one of the boutiques that I shop at was going out of business. And so all the perfumes were 40% off and this was one that they had left. So I said, okay, I'll pick it up at 40% off. You can't go wrong. But, oh my gosh, I love wearing this fragrance. I really do. I think at full price, doesn't smell as good but at 40% off, 
it smells amazing the next one i have for you is umber eternal and this is from the orient collection this is the only one i have from the orient collection this is something i reach for when it's very very cold this is a leathery animalic amber scent but it has this really interesting makeup bag lipstick iris accord um, in the opening which i really really like I almost forgot about Apre Londe. This is again one of my favorite violet scents and this was released in 1906. I think it's the oldest one I have from Guerlain's collection. This is a beautiful violet. It's got this watery quality to it so it's a little bit green and then some vanilla. It's it's a gorgeous scent. Um, I believe this was just discontinued and that's that is a shame. We're down to the last three full bottles in my collection. I do have other mini bottles like Mitsuko, Jiki, I have um, Champelice, I have some other um, limited edition stuff but those are in decants and in mini bottles and I'm just showing you the full bottles today. This is my first uh, Aqua Allegoria. This is Pomp de Lune. This was my this is my favorite. I think this is one of the best Aqua Allegorias and was my first purchase within that collection. I didn't think this was a collection I really wanted to explore, but as soon as I got this one, I, you know, decided to get some more. This is a beautiful grapefruit fragrance. One of my favorite grapefruit fragrances ever made. So I suggest you try this one out if you love grapefruits. It's it's especially good for summertime, very refreshing. The second one I have is Passiflora. This is a passion flower, passion fruit scent. And again, another gorgeous fragrance for summertime. I um, had this on my list for summer last year, I believe. It's got this beautiful sharpness, this beautiful citrus, and then the sweetness from the passion flower, passion fruit. I love this one. And the last one, last but not least, is the um, Aqua Allegoria that I purchased not too long ago. This is Flora Cherisea, and I had been in a little bit of a cherry blossom phase, so I was buying a bunch of cherry blossom fragrances, and this was one that I bought. And so it's a cherry blossom with a little bit of citrus, again, has that sharpness that a lot of the Aqua Allegorias have that I like so much. So Flora Teresia finishes off this Guerlain video. I almost forgot to rate my top 10, so let's do that right now, starting with Spiritus Doble Veni, a beautiful vanilla fragrance, but just doesn't rate as high for me as other fragrances. Number nine is going to be Lure Blanche. I only have this little decant because these bottles are $600. This is a recent release and I did do a video about this fragrance. It didn't have rave reviews, but I really like this fragrance, um, but very limited edition. I would love to have a bottle, but I don't. Number eight would be Bois d'Armani. Number seven would be Apre Londe. I'm so... Disappointed that this is going to be discontinued soon or has been discontinued. I should probably get another bottle of that. Number six is Montguerlain, just because I've been really enjoying this fragrance ever since I got it. Whenever I smell it, I just it just makes me feel so good. <laughs> Number five on the list is Mon Persu Nectar, despite the bottle issues. I love that fragrance. Number four, even though I don't reach for this fragrance a whole lot, it's an iconic fragrance. I'll always have it in my collection. When I do wear it, I really do enjoy it, and this is Shalimar. Number three, my favorite gourmand scent, Gourmand Coquine. Number two, my little unicorn, <laughs> my found unicorn, Meteorites. And number one, a fragrance I can't be without, I don't feel like I could ever be without this fragrance. It is part of me now, and this is Leo Blue. I just really, really love this one. So that is my ranking. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment down below and tell me what your favorite Guerlain fragrance is. Maybe I have not smelled it yet. 
I'm not a collector of fragrances. I don't collect bottles. I like to really wear what's in my collection, so I only buy fragrances that I think I'll wear and that I really, really enjoy. So if you don't see something here, it's because I don't think I'll wear it or get use out of it. Guerlain has some beautiful flacons, beautiful things that I would love to have in my collection, but again, I'm not a collector, so I don't feel like I need to have everything. I will leave some links down below of resources, places you could go if you are really into Guerlain and you want to see some huge collections and some just beautiful eye candy. Guerlain eye candy. I will link that down below. Have a great week and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!